What's up folks, this is Gus. And in this video, we will see together an amazing VPN router that can let you run your engagements anonymously. I've been using this piece of art for a while and I wanted to share with you all I know regarding it. So let's get started. It's important to understand that this is a mobile router and is meant so you can take it wherever you want. As a penetration tester, I want a reliable connection and at the same time, I want my privacy using VPN. This router will offer me all this with an additional Tor network functionality. That being said, let's see together how you can use it as an ethical hacker. Mainly, you can use it in the office as a repeater and you will get a better signal. And if you connect it to the Ethernet cable, you will get even a faster connection. Now, if you use the wireless 2.4 gigahertz, then you will get a maximum of 300 megabits per second. And if you use the wireless 5 gigahertz, you will get a speed up to 433 megabits per second. And of course, you can use this router anywhere you want. In a coffee shop, in a hotel room, in your trip, like in a train or an airplane, for example. On top of that, let's say you're in a foreign country and you want a complete secure and reliable network connection, then this router will be your friend. And of course, you can use this router at home as well. Furthermore, you can use it as a repeater in wireless dead spots. Now, you can see the potential of this little beast. Wait, I'm not done yet. You can connect it to the internet using different ways. Number one, you can connect it to another wireless access point. Number two, you can connect it using the WAN Ethernet cable. Number three, you can connect it to a USB 3G or 4G modem by plugging it in the USB port. Finally, you can tether it with a mobile phone to connect to the internet. Looking at this router from the outside, you will see on one side a reset button and a mod switch button next to it. I already have configured this button to switch the VPN on or off from the admin panel. Don't worry, you will see how to configure it soon. At the back of the router, we have one WAN and two LAN ports. On the other side, you can insert a micro SD card to store and share data with people that are connected to your router. Finally, on the front of the router, you will see a power LED and two Wi-Fi indicators as well. I already recorded what I did when I first initialized this router. Let's see together how to configure it so you can follow the same steps on your end. To power it, I will be using a USB power bank. But of course, you can use the electrical wall outlet with the adapter that comes with it. For the first time, you will need to use your PC wireless adapter to connect to the default Wi-Fi spot, which is the same in name of the router itself. The default password that you should use for the first time is good life. Once you click on the connect button, it will take around 30 seconds and you should be in business. 
Next, I will select the properties to inspect the IP address that I was assigned to join this network. As you can see, the IP address is 192.168.8.193. And below it, I can see the router IP address. I'll use this IP in the upcoming steps to configure the router using the web portal. So I open my web browser and head straight to the IP address 192.168.8.1. That one. First, I will choose the language. Next, I'll set up the web portal admin password. And I'll enter a super duper secure password. And I'm in. As you can see, at this stage, I'm not connected to the internet yet. I will be using another wireless access point for connecting to the outside world. In other words, I will use it as a repeater. To get the job done, I will scroll to the bottom of the internet page and click on the scan link to use the Wi-Fi repeater functionality. Here in the drop-down list, I will choose my Wi-Fi access point and enter its secret key password and click on the join button. And voila, now I have an internet connection. The next step is the firmware upgrade. I'll select the upgrade link and click on the download button to get the latest firmware version. Once it's done, I will click on the install button to finalize the process. As you can see, I lost my connection to the router because it's rebooting. At this stage, I will have to reconnect to it from the beginning using my PC wireless adapter. Then. I must log in using the credentials that I chose in the beginning during the setup process. At this stage, I have to change the wireless settings of this little beast. I will click on the modify button to change the 2.4 GHz settings first. At the top, I will change the SSID name and after that, I will change the password key for the SSID. And finally, save all the changes. After that, I will make the same modifications to the 5 GHz part. Once all this is done, I must reconnect to the router using the new SSID name and password key as well. The final important step for setting this router is to add the OpenVPN client functionality. Myself, I use Tor Guard for VPN. I will have to log in into my account first and then download the VPN configuration to get this working. Once this is done, I will go back to the OpenVPN client page and upload the config file that I just generated using TorGuard. After that, have to supply the username and password for my VPN account. And finally, click on the connect button. Now, let me show you how to connect to the Tor network. In fact, all you have to do is to click on the Tor from the menu and select the enable button. Easy, right? Finally, 
I will configure the function button on the side of the router to connect or disconnect from the VPN. It's a simple step. I just need to select the Open VPN client toggle from the menu choices. That's it. Take note that I got this router from Amazon and it's around 70 US dollar. Folks, this is not a sponsored video. And I did this tutorial because I wanted to share the information with you. Stay tuned and subscribe to watch more videos like this. Until the next time.